What's up, fine folks? It's episode Sweet 16 hey. of Double Tapped. I am Jay. I'm Tanner. Tanner, today we are drinking a beer with an awesome name. Yeah. Crushworthy. Crushworthy. And I don't know if the camera... Yeah, you can kind of see. The the can is very classic tattoo art, mm-hmm. which is very cool. I like this design a lot. Yeah, it's jumped off the the shelves at me in the beer cave. Can I can I re- read Absolutely. you? Absolutely. We should do this every episode. The if they I, have a blurb. I love beer like descriptors cuz they're always hilarious. Do you believe in love at first sip? With a lightly filtered body okay. of a <laughs> with a lightly filtered body and a sweet kiss of orange, it's more than a crush. It's your new main squeeze. It's in, it's very light, which is to be expected. Crushable. Yeah. Uh and yeah, just, it's it's sort Oh wow, it's incredibly light. Yeah, that's interesting. That is crush. That's downright crushable. <laughs> I tell you what, that's crushable. <laughs> Tanner, what have you been playing this oh, week? Oh God, a lot. Lots eh? of stuff. Lots of stuff. I've been playing the opposite. Mm. But you go first. <laughs> I yeah, there's been a lot. So uh, let me run through the normal stuff first. Dead by Daylight, still playing more Killer. They ended their uh, anniversary event where you get like double XP basically for sure. the entire event. Uh, they did a weekend last weekend for more double XP, or actually this current weekend. What am I talking about? It's right now. Um, so I've been playing more of that. That's been really fun. Nothing new to report there. It's a good game. Except for I did have such a toxic group of survivors. I saw you mention something about this. That it like legitimately made me self-conscious of playing Killer again. So mm. if you don't know the way Dead by Daylight works, uh, it's... One killer versus four survivors. The survivor's goal is to escape. The killer's goal is to kill them all. I normally view... Shout out to Metallica. (laughs) I normally view the killer's role more as the game master. So Mm, I'm like, I just want everybody to have fun. It doesn't really matter if I get kills or not because it's just experience points. Uh, So I am a pretty friendly killer, as people would refer to it. These people, though, were just teabagging me every chance they Mm. got... And, like, doing unnecessarily arbitrary stuff to stun me. And, like, everybody had a flashlight, which was so rare, which you can use to blind the killer. Gotcha. Uh, It was just a very weird group. And I was... Very middle school Call of Duty. Yes, exactly. They're like, we're going to run trains on this guy. You know, that kind of stuff. But, honestly, I was such a low rank compared to them that I don't even know why I got in the group with them at the first place. So, I'm just going to wipe it off as bad luck. Because the rest of that game has been fun. Yeah. Uh, I picked up a game called... Oh, what is it called? Mini Motorways. Mini Motorways. So there's a game called Mini Metro that Mini came out. Mini as in small? Yes, M-I-N-I. Okay. Uh, there is a game called Mini Metro made by the same developers, which was about like, it was a very pretty looking puzzle game about getting trains to certain stations and more stations would pop up and you have to connect the train routes and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. This is, and it's going to sound really boring, this is, you have, it's a puzzle game again, but you have to connect houses to buildings in traffic form okay so each of your lines that you draw is a road but all of the yellow houses have to go to all the yellow buildings all the red houses have to go all the red buildings etc and the demand for each building to be filled grows higher and higher more houses pop up the map starts spreading and the puzzle of it is making basically efficient road planning uh, so you, and as you go, as a week advances, you get pieces like a roundabout or a bridge or uh, uh, like an expressway. So you get these little things that you get to choose what your sort of power up is in one of those forms. And it's just how long can you go okay. as all these things pop up? So it's not stage based. You're building upon yourself like as you go. Well, no, it is levels, but each oh, okay. level grows exponentially. Gotcha. So it's basically it's like a high score type thing. You got to get to a certain threshold right. in each level. Yeah, got it. uh, it's really really fun. It's a very soothing game. I I saw it because randomly on YouTube I had a recommend of a civil engineer playing it and like talking about like his actual. You know, oh, this is what I would do if I was actually planning this road mm-hmm. kind of thing. So that was kind of interesting, and that's what got me to buy. It's only like eight bucks, and it's been a really nice little soothing thing. I'll I'll come back around, but what have you been playing? Slay the Spire. Hell yeah. Which, I might as well acknowledge now, I took last week off. I wasn't feeling the best. Still got some lingering congestion. Yeah. So I was laying around a lot. Had a lot of time, to, a lot of attempts to pour in. Finally beat the stupid heart twice. Once with the ironclad, once with the silent. Nice. Um, which is ironic considering my initial yeah. uh, propensity for the defect. Right. Uh, but my build basically with the ironclad, which 
the more I thought about this, I was like, this was genius, but not really intentionally. It just sort of fell into my lap. Yeah. Uh, I use the uh, apparition intangible. Okay. Uh, where you get like you cut your health in half, but you get five intangible cards. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, and an intangible in the game means that for one turn, all damage you take is reduced to one. Yeah. Uh, and then let me think here. What was the other? Oh yeah, I had the uh, shield build where mm-hmm. uh, not that when I got shield that did damage, but I could just accumulate shield endlessly because I had the card that was block doesn't go away at the end of your turn. Right, right, right. When you get to the heart, one of the things that the heart does is this one move that's like 7 times 12 damage. Jesus. It hits you like 7 times for 12 damage each. Sure. When you have the uh, intangible, it reduces each hit to 1. So it's 7 damage. Right. No, or yes. No, it would be... I forget if it's 7 times 12 or 12 12 times times 7. Whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. But the wrinkle is that I had the intangible on, and I had enough shield to where that still wouldn't damage me, even with like 10 hits or however many of one damage each. Right. But what I did have was the uh, thorn uh, relic Mm -hmm. that every time I took a hit, it did three damage to them. Right. And I also had a potion that did an additional three damage. Nice. So every single time it was hitting me, that was like six or however many damage on a, like, it, stacked so much because of how many little tiny hits it was doing yeah uh and then when it would do its other turn which is just one big hit Mm -hmm. i still had the intangibles that would reduce that to one nice i like cleaned its clock that time i was like how did i go from not being able to get it down to like (laughs) half damage with ironclad to it i might have lost like a total of like 20 health yeah um so just wiped away with it and then with the silent it was the exact strategy i've been trying forever which was just sure uh you know exponentially increasing the poison and I had a deck that I think had three triple poison cards in oh, it. Oh wow. So I had it but it, the question was do I wait a turn and try to add more poison and then triple it later or do I go ahead and triple it now but like you know cap my ceiling. Right. I went ahead and did it and had like 150 poison on it. Jesus. So that took like five or six turns That's to awesome. totally kill it. That's uh, sick. If I'd have got it you know one or two more times it would have been dead instantly but yeah. you know. You take your hits where you can get them, and I, that was a calculated risk, and it paid off. Yeah, that that game is all about just sometimes Sometimes you don't even know. I think the best thing about that game is it makes you adapt. Yeah. Because you could be shooting for a certain deck, and then you get all the cards for a different deck, and you're like, all right, I'm just going to go with go what with this it. is now. Uh, and I really enjoy that part of it. I've also tried out MLB The Show. Nice. Uh, I got Game Pass for a dollar. Oh yeah. And so I whipped out the the Xbox Series S, the last gen. Um, so I guess it's the Xbox One S. Sorry, mm-hmm. I get their names confused. Gotcha. Uh, and it's pretty fun. I enjoy yeah. it as like a podcast type yeah, thing. It's like it fills its role well. Hitting is hard. It is. I have struggle to hit in that game. Uh, pitching's really fun though. I, that's my my created player that I built. I'm just purely a pitcher, and I hit. I still have like a bat, like three hundred. Like, yeah, that's which, that's you know. about what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm trying to think. I've been playing a lot of stuff, but I would say those are the main things. I did start a new game of. Oh, there is another game. I did start a new game of Civ Six that's been going pretty well. Um, playing as Rome, it's been kind of like, nice. I like the phrasing that it, it has been going pretty well because it's still <laughs> going on. Yeah. It, well, I don't. I don't. It would be. Gosh, how long would it be to play one game of Civ from start to finish? It'd probably be like eight hours maybe depending on what pace you go at it's sure. a very just like kind of turn my brain off game yeah uh i played a game called sayonara wild hearts i've heard of this which made the rounds last year as sort of a game of the year sleeper contender uh very fun very stimulating to the point where it's only two hours ish long i think and i only played about half of it because i was beginning to be overstimulated hmm. and that's not something that normally happens to me uh, but it is built, it is a rhythm game, so it's mm. all about the music that is all original to the game as well, uh, which that part of it's exciting in its own right. And then, the the way the rhythm game changes is really cool. So, like, starting out, it's like your classic tracks, like a Guitar Hero type sure. thing, and you're just moving this little character to sit on the tracks. And then it becomes, like an action game basically where you're driving this motorcycle and all the things are timed to the music but it's more about 
just getting a good score and avoiding the walls and all that and jumping at the right time and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, sort so of like an endless runner. Kind yeah, of. yeah, it does. It has very Temple Run vibes at times, uh, but like sync to music, like a Sound Shapes or some of those Rayman levels. Um, really, really fun. Like I said, though, it is. I would honestly be worried if you have any sort of light sensitivity of playing this game. It's very flashy. Uh, it's it's a beautiful looking game. The color scheme is really cool. All the illustration in it's cool. But yeah, it's it's. I could see it having. I'm not sure if it had an epilepsy warning, but I could see it warranting one. It's it can, one of those. It can be an assault on the senses. Yes, because the music's going and you're trying to yeah. time it, and it's just like, boom, jump, boom, jump, boom, and it's just like everything in your face. It's really cool. Uh, What'd I you did, play it on? Uh, PlayStation. I picked it up on a sale. It was. It wasn't that expensive. It might still be on sale now. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. How many mock drafts have you done in the last week? <laughs> I've two, done. I guess two weeks. Uh, I've only done the two so far. <laughs> I've done the one with you and then the one Dude, a couple of days ago. I've done at least like two or three a day. <laughs> <laughs> like Jesus. Cuz that's the other that's the only other thing that's been occupying my time. This in is this for regard. fantasy football by the exactly. way if you don't know what Mount Fantasy Mark football are. corner right here. Yeah. Uh, our little slice of our own podcast. So, you, I had mentioned that my strategy was do a bunch of mock drafts and do a plus sign if I Which I love like this my idea. strategy minus sign if I don't. Yeah. I sort of kept doing that. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And two strategies are just completely eliminated, uh, which is going wide receiver twice in the first round yeah. or first two rounds. And really, I think I might have had one where I went wide receiver tight end. Yeah. That was like questionable. You need a running back in the first two rounds. Yes. Uh, At least one. And then I'm like, I don't know that I can necessarily say firmly that I'm going to go in saying I'm going to do running back, running back. Right. But... I know that that is, works most of the time. So pretty much I've just narrowed it down to like a few strategies. But my spot, I'm drafting sixth in our 10-man yep. league. Yeah, I'm fourth. Which is an interesting spot based on who's going to be there sure. most likely. Uh, I've had a lot of drafts where my pick was obvious. I've had plenty of drafts where it was not. Yeah. Um, so if it's one of those it's not situations, I'm just going to play the board. Like, and it's, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and all the times that I've had to do that, as long as I've stuck to my guns and sort of made sure I at least get one decent running back, I've yeah. usually come out at least liking my team. Sure. Maybe and not loving it. That's all you're really shooting for, too. Like, I, I find, personally, I like leaning more evaluation than yeah. just trying a bunch of drafts because, at the end of the day, like, your strategy, I think, is really cool of, let me see which strategy works for the first few rounds because those are the most important. Yeah. But the mock isn't going to be what your draft is going to end up like no matter what, so... I think once I do a few and get sort of a feel for who's going where, then I can start evaluating and saying, okay, who do I like higher than they're normally taken? Who do I like less than they're normally taken? That kind of thing. Yeah. The, really, the question, and I'll, I'll end it on my parts on this, yeah. is that there are th- really a couple of people that if they fall to me, they're currently ranked higher than my pick, and I have to decide whether I actually want to take them or not. Yeah. That's Saquon Barkley, mm-hmm. based on just injury history. If he wasn't injured, he would be gone in a heartbeat and I'll yeah. be more than happy to have him yeah. and Travis Kelsey which mm. is you know the best tight end in the league but do you want to spend your first round pick on a tight on end on a tight end yeah uh, the few times I've had several drafts where Kamara or Henry fell to me oh wow which Henry is ranked ranked 6 yeah he's right around uh, there so that's not that crazy Kamara falling that far is a little weird it is uh, and Kamara's not going to fall to you I'm just going to tell okay. you because I think Brent's taking him okay interesting our, our buddy mentioned that he said he's going to take him at number him. two yes yeah. so okay. if he does then I'm intrigued what falls to me but uh, yeah I. and you have four okay yeah so I'll get one of the top four guys that's yeah. all I'm really worried because about because then it becomes if I don't if it, it's Saquon and Kelsey are the top two left for me yeah it's those two or the safe pick the default is Zeke Right. Who would be like the next top running back. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think our draft is going to go CMC, Kamara, Cook. And then I get, I don't know who I'm taking fourth yet. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe Henry, maybe Saquon. Yeah. I still got to. If there was clarity about Saquon, it would be yeah, a slam Yeah, I've, I've thought about just going for it. Yeah. We'll see. And I mean, there's plenty of value still left at running back if you just hammer it early in the first like, sure. three rounds. Yeah. So you can count, you could like, you could go three running backs. You could go like Saquon. C-E-H, Chris Carson. <laughs> yeah. And that's still, you've got like a solid, yeah. you know, core there. Sorry for the aside there, but <laughs> I get very passionate about this stuff. Yeah. It's 
great. Let's move on to the news. Yeah. And I sort of listed them in order, but I want to start with one story. I want to start with the most like serious story, and then we can, you know, have our jollies okay. from there. I know what we're starting uh, with. <laughs> yeah, you probably do. And I'm going to go to The Verge here okay. and read a little bit from the article, because I'm going to pick up with the walkout that happened earlier this week from the Activision Blizzard employees Sure, that was in the wake of a myriad of accusations and now lawsuits and just plenty of stuff you know, corroborating a very terrible misogynistic culture over there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read the first couple or er, paragraphs here. This is from The Verge. This is from Zoe Schiffer. Shout out. Activision Blizzard employees walk out of work to protest rampant sexism and discrimination. Wednesday morning, hundreds of Blizzard employees rallied outside the company's main campus in Irvine, California, to protest the company's handling of sexual harassment and discrimination charges. They're asking the gaming studio to agree to four demands, including ending mandatory arbitration in all employment contracts. Until these demands are met, we won't stop fighting, a walkout representative tells The Verge. The move comes after the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing sued Activision Blizzard on July 20th, alleging the company to had have a pervasive frat boy culture where female employees were constantly harassed, discriminated against, and underpaid. And the only things that I have to say about this are I'm glad that there are consequences, and it is unfortunate that this is not too surprising. Yes. You know? Yeah, agreed. Uh, I mean, this is similar to the Ubisoft thing from a few months ago. Um, it I, I've seen from a lot of folks in, in gaming, a lot of women in gaming, that this is by far, this is not the only case of this happening. This is just the most public right now. And arguably from the company, the biggest company. One of, for sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, there has been... It sucks that this this sort of frat boy culture has existed in gaming for so long. Uh, I read, I, I've obviously this has been a lot on Twitter and stuff, uh, just different stories, testimonials. There was mm-hmm. apparently something ref- some of the people at Blizzard referred to as the Cosby Suite. Yeah, I, re- uh, I encourage you. I don't. We're not going to go into the details yeah, please, of like. Please read about this if yeah, it's something you. Because there's a lot of specific anecdotes from people within Blizzard that you know outline the specific allegations, so you can get a clear picture of what all was going yeah, on. Yeah, I don't want to state exactly what they were, just to for sakes of getting it wrong. And obviously, you should hear that from the voices themselves instead of us, anyway. Uh, but yeah, just like that, and like just the day to day harassment and belittling, and like. No one wants to work in an environment like that, and no one should ever have to, especially at a company you would think as large as... As corporate. Right, exactly, as, as Blizzard and Activision. Like, I'm just baffled. I, I won't say baffled because I'm not surprised, unfortunately, right. but I'm baffled that this still goes on at this point in society, yeah. I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it's... I'm disappointed it's proliferated this long. Yeah, we know intellectually that this we should be beyond this, but we're not surprised that right. you know certain people you know sort of drag it down for the rest of us. Yeah, um, I'm just curious as to how they possibly move on from this scot free, or if it's I, I don't know what <sighs> yeah, really know. comes from this. I uh, I mean obviously there's the the. DFEH or whatever it's called. Yeah, and there uh, are more, more lawsuits have been piling sure, up. Which they will, you know, I'm hoping they're held accountable for yeah. the awful work culture they created. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, It's been interesting to see, and this is more what I'm more familiar with, the streamer side of people who maybe stream Overwatch or yeah. World of Warcraft or one of the Blizzard games. It's been really interesting to see a lot of people either just not playing those anymore or saying... I think it's a decision everyone has to make on their own, whether yeah. they, you know, because obviously not everyone who worked uh, on these games were the ones treat, mistreating people, but also it was a culture large enough to be, it's you know, it's a really hard thing to yeah. decide. Uh, but it's been interesting to see sort of this. I'm glad to see such a widespread of support, at least in the gaming culture at large for the people who were victimized by this yeah. culture. I tend not to begrudge people who on either side of that decision choose whether to continue playing Overwatch for example or say I'm just going to drop it and right. you know I once it's out in the you know ether it's sort of in a way it's out of the hands of its creators but obviously by supporting it you know sure. there's, there's money and everything involved I get it yeah um, I don't I think the sort of best of both worlds mix is if you love the game continue to play it and then do other things to support the causes that you sure you know, yeah stand up for the victims donate blah 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 there's a lot right. of ways you right. can support them uh, but yeah it's just a really shitty situation it is yeah 
Uh, it sucks. And hopefully there are pretty massive legal and financial ramifications for Blizzard that would do at least a little bit to help them, you know, change their ways. Yeah. Move. Hopefully people are deposed. On, I mean, this, obviously, this is the kind of thing that people... High level executives get fired for. Yes. Oh, so yeah. There for should sure. be a pretty this, substantial overhaul of this their is hierarchy. A, this is a top down situation Absolutely. where if you let this culture exist. And I hope, one of my other hopes from it, because obviously it's a very negative thing to have come out, but one of, I hope one of the smaller positives from it is that other places will start examining themselves yeah. and say, well, maybe we aren't this bad, but here are things we can change or whatever. Um, so I hope. That this just changes the gaming culture at large from a self-examination standpoint. Yeah, and whether it's a, you know, more reflective change or, you kind of hate to say it, but whether it's almost a fearful change. of like, Whatever gets them to yeah, change, Yeah, whatever honestly. gets the job done. If you, you know, if they're high-level misogynists at other gaming companies that see this, it's like, I better stop, I better tone it down a little bit. I mean, that's at least a positive affect. Sure, you know, it's, that, it's not the ideal, but it's better than nothing, I exactly. guess. Exactly. And that's your view of misogyny by two white guys. Exactly. Now, Hope go, it was. Yeah. Go listen to the voices actually saying this. Yeah, in multiple, you know, great reporting out there. Yes. All, all that sort of thing. Yeah, there's been a on. lot of really good stuff on it. So let's move on. Let's go to the really big story that we missed. Okay. Uh, this was a couple days before I had to, you know, X and A on the last podcast. <laughs> before he had to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that was the EA Play Live show oh, that God. happened last right. week. Right. I forgot this happened. Uh. And I'm just going to run us through everything that happened. Please do. <laughs> uh, not in a, not in order. Sure. Uh, but this is a recap. This is on GameSpot by Eddie. M- How would you pronounce his last name? Okay. M a k u c h. Oh. McCook. Makuk. Uh, yeah, McCook maybe. I don't want to say McCooch. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Makuch. Makuch. All right. I don't. Oh, know. and Gabe Gerwin. Oh, shout out! Shout out to Eddie and Gabe. It's very close to Gus and Eddie. First big thing: Dead Space. Yes, a full remake of Dead Space. This isn't a remaster, but the original game remade from the ground up by EA Motive. Yeah, we already touched on like sort of what we think about this, but I was very disappointed by what the reveal was because mm. it was just a teaser. Yeah. Like there was no gameplay shown. It it just looked like it would have been cool if it were at a conference and we had no idea it was coming. Absolutely. But we had... It would have been actually really hype if that's what it yeah, was. But we had every idea it was <laughs> coming and so when they were when all it was was confirming it, it exists like, when we already knew it existed yeah, you're right it, yeah it, it, it was it was very underwhelming and for that to be their closer was really surprising yeah that being said could have been much worse sure in terms of like sure what it could have been other projects or whatever so i'm glad it's dead space yeah i'm a little weirded out that it's a remake of the first game me too i, I suppose, wish it was just a new one i suppose that's this well i guess there were three good options okay there was a sequel, like Dead Space 4. Dead Space 4, right. A reboot. Yes, like or a God of War. a remake in this vein. Yeah. Uh, I don't know which one I necessarily would have preferred. I never played any of the, the games. So I guess in a way this is good for people like us. Sure. Who, you know, I have never touched Dead Space. Yeah, nor have I. So this will be a good entry point if they ever decide to make a new one in the like a proper sequel. I will say I think they're doing this because it's less expensive and it's a good way to see if the market the wants a new one. for sure. Yeah, so... Yeah. I would say if this sells well, we probably will get a Dead Space 4, but they're probably just putting the feelers out now, like the, like Activision did with Crash and Spyro. I tend to agree. Apex Legends Emergence, so that's their Season 10 yep. name, and they have unveiled a new character called Seer. Who looks really cool. I like this character design a lot. Very mysterious, sort of like fashionable, just a really cool looking character. Uh, I couldn't really, because I watched this trailer... <coughs> Uh, I, tra- I watched this trailer live on stream, and I couldn't really parse out exactly what their skills were. Mm. Uh, so I'll be I'll be intrigued. He might already be out on you know public testing or where the PTR yeah. or whatever. Uh, but I have not seen any of it yet, so I'll be interested to see if this can pull me back in because I feel like Apex is one of those games that I'm just on the outside of, and if someone's like come back, I'll be I'll be all all the way back. It's a very easy game to pull me back in, but yeah, it's. One of those good, like, small party size where, like, all you need is one or two people to yep. be, like, jump in with me and you just dive right in. Uh, I will note that because we're still, there's still, I guess, I guess at this point we're not really waiting to see if Sony's going to do anything else. Sure. But I did predict 
in our E3 predictions. Yeah. And if you count this as still E3 season, <laughs> that there would be a new Overwatch character, blah, blah, blah. Apex, you mean? Or, yeah, Apex character. Uh, so we'll address that at a later time when yeah, we finally we'll... go back to our EA sc- or E3 scoring. <laughs> when are we going to do that? Do we wait for a Sony conference eventually, or are we, are we just saying Sony's was the Well, thing? isn't... Uh, what's... Uh, Jeff Keighley's event that's sort of like the end of the summer. Game Awards? Oh, no. The Opening Night Live? But that yes, was the first right. thing. Is there like two parts Summer of Games that? Fest? There's something that... Is, he does something. That sort of marks the end of the summer of gaming. That might yeah. be the best, like, concrete date to set. Sure. So, we'll keep an eye out for that. We'll yeah. update you. Yeah. Grid Legends. <laughs> a brand new racing game from Codemasters, a developer and publisher that EA acquired several months ago. Hey. Cool. Wasn't Grid a other? Was, Grid's like an old yeah yeah, yeah. franchise. I, I didn't know this until recently when I watched because I kind of scrubbed through this. I didn't watch the full thing. Uh, because I saw a car in like uh, on I saw a car originally. I was like, oh, it's Need for Speed, and then it was on a dirt track, and I was like, oh, it's dirt, and then it came up and was Grid, <laughs> and I realized EA has three racing properties. You need to. Offload some of that. What's the difference between grid and dirt? I have no idea. <laughs> well, if grids can be on dirt, then there is no difference, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know what the, is a missed opportunity for this to have been called like Grid Legends Hunters Arena. <laughs> uh, the Grid Hunters Arena, arena Legends. Legends. <laughs> Lost in Random, the latest game from EA Originals line. Lost in Random is from developer Zoink, who previously made Fay and Stick It to the Man. Uh, oh, they made Stick It to the Man. Wow, that was a PlayStation Plus game, I think. Uh, that is the dice game. If uh-huh. you if like, not dice the developer. It's like actual rolling dice. Um, it looks kind of cool. I'm 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 not sold on it entirely. I know some people on my feed really like it. Uh, but it looks like the same trailer we saw. I know that during the EA Play. This was another one of those where they're like, let's talk to the developer and he's going to walk us through the gameplay. And it's like, no, don't do that. I don't care. Um, but the art style is cool. That's all I really have about that game. If there were ever a game that I had less to say than, <laughs> about than this game, I would I'd just be completely silent. Yeah. So, Knockout City <laughs> Season 2. Yay! Uh, I still haven't touched Knockout City, even though I'm. that's not from like an aversion to the game. I just... It's fun, really done it yet. It's I've fun. heard that nothing but good things. Uh, I don't know. Does it operate? I don't know if you know this. Like sort of on a Fortnite Battle Pass scale, as pretty I much ninety nine so. percent of games do these days. I think so, but you have to buy it. You, it is yeah. twenty dollars. Although there is a free trial until your level whatever. I think. Well, you see, buy, buy the game. Yes, not yeah, City. Okay. Yeah, it's like twenty bucks. But it's cool. fun. It's fun. I played the Alpha, and it's really really fun. So this was weird. Okay. A little Battlefield 2042 update. <laughs> is this the portal thing? This is. This is weird. Uh, Battlefield 2042 portal is a mashup of 1942, Bad Company 2, yeah. and Battlefield 3. Yeah. Uh, which I get, it's supposedly like, it's a mode in their multiplayer. Yes. It sort of, in some way, blends all these games together. It's a matchmaker. So you can make your own game type, basically, ah. is the idea. Um, so you could, it's kind of, I guess like Halo custom games is the closest thing that I have a reference to, but they were showing, it looks a little more in depth than that. When they showed the trailer, they had kind of like how dreams does visual versions instead of coding. You're like, this logic means this. And there's like little branching trees of Uh logic things. It seemed like there's a little bit of that in this, maybe not as much, but it's cool for, I think it'll be cool for people who like really stream battlefield and, you know, one of their mods or something is really into this, and then they can just start playing custom games with their community or whatever. I don't know how... I don't know how successful it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to catch on, because it seems complicated enough to be a barrier for most people. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was weird that they were just like, oh, here's the Bad Company 2 logo. It's like, what? Okay. Yeah, it's... Cool? Pisses me off, because <laughs> Battlefield Bad Company 2 is my favorite single player battlefield mm. uh, experience. Yeah. Uh I loved that game back in the day. Uh in the multiplayer no one ever played it with me. It was like one of those random games that I just picked up. Sure. Uh so I really dug the single player, never got too deep into the multiplayer. Uh it's just more battlefield multiplayer. Sure. So it's nothing revolutionary. Yeah. Uh but it's a little bit of like a they're like, oh hey dangling this in front of like, oh you people who have been clamoring for Bad Company Two or Bad Company Three. Yeah. You know, here's this. I'm like, no, this is not what I want. So 
That was it. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think there was it's much pretty more. pretty short little thing. Well, I, didn't, I, I didn't even watch it. I just saw all the recap I, stuff. I scrubbed through it for the trailers. Yeah. Uh, shout out. This is not in any way a diss of Austin Creed, who I think is wonderful and did a great job hosting this from the little interview sna- uh, snippets I saw. But th- this was a bad conference. Uh-huh. It was bad. Like, because the big surprise was Dead Space, which we already knew, Battlefield was just a custom games trailer. The Lost in Random, sure, that looks interesting, but, you know, that could be anywhere. There was nothing worth watching in this EA play to me, personally. Other than Austin himself. Yeah, exactly. Good old Xavier Woods. Shout out. Let's see here. All right, we've got a couple of PlayStation updates. Okay. PS5 has officially sold 10 million units. And million. Uh, That's a lot. It is. I love people saying to who, <laughs> which is a great follow up because uh, people still want them and they still can't find them. Which unfortunately. is just funny because that means we make up like a very small but still kind of a plurality of like, like our PS5 group. ownership. Yeah. That three out of our like close friends, we all have them. Yeah, for I sure. I love it. It's cool. We got uh, it. We got in there day one. We were just on the on the ball. Yeah, and just you know, keep your eyes peeled and your nose to the ground like a like a hound dog, like a truffle pig, exactly. <laughs> and maybe you'll find one. Find those PS Five troubles. No, this is a good sign. Uh, I hope they make more PS Five <laughs> games because there seems like there haven't been very many. Speaking of which, okay, Horizon Forbidden West right has been delayed. 2022, which at this point is not entirely unexpected, but we were just holding out hope. Yeah, the fact that we hadn't had a date yet, and it's almost August, was not a good sign, but they did say early 2022, right? Yeah, it's Q1. Okay, so that's not that bad. I'm just curious, does Sony make a push for the holiday? If if so, what is it? And also, if not, does Xbox make a huge push for the holiday? That's what I, I don't know what it could possibly be on Sony's end to fill that void for this holiday. I mean... Unless they just start adding a ton of stuff to, like, PlayStation Plus Collection or something like that. Sure. But I, in terms of, like, a first-party exclusive game... It probably doesn't exist. You can't even call Deathloop that now. Yeah, like, sure. Yeah, yeah, good point. You have point. a second-party game published by your direct competitor. <laughs> it is so weird, by the way, booting up an Xbox and seeing the PlayStation logo when I play the yeah, show. That's weird, too. It's so cool. Uh, but yeah, I'm just... I'm, I'm not personally too... Uh, I don't know disappointed this is kind of what i've been expecting yeah me too i just i want a little bit more rollout for ps5 stuff even if it's smaller stuff in between and covid is covid's gonna covid sure of course uh covid gonna covid you know delta's gonna delta too. yeah yeah uh but you, we have ps5s we're there's not like a risk of us deciding to throw ours in the creek sure of course uh yeah i've just played a, go ahead go, uh, wait. go i was just gonna say this is a blow obviously to like the people who are still Maybe there's a person out there who hypothetically is just waiting for the first PS5 or Xbox Series X that they can possibly get their oh, hands on. right. It's like whichever comes first. But maybe they're like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and go for the Xbox yeah. instead. Game like, Pass know. is a great deal, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Just the people on the fence, this is one of those little tiebreakers that matters. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, like, PS5 is just my main console, and I just play PS4 stuff on PS5 now. Like, it's not a... It's not a hassle to play the PS5. I love it. I just... I would like a, a couple more really toothy games to get my teeth yeah. into. Well, Tanner, let's move on. This is going to be a small, big topic, but okay. this is a fun, just kind of brainstorming... Oh, no, that's not Blink-182. Some 41. There you go. They're back. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Uh, this is the segment... This is the podcast within a podcast called... Crazy shit I saw on Reset Era. Today, this is from a thread that I thought would be just rampant with crazy stuff. Okay. This is from the thread, what's your gaming hot take? Perfect. I'm going to start oh, with... Oh, I love it. User, the Nubia Blows. <laughs> N-O-O-B-I-A-B-L-O-S. Nubia Blows. These are probably the three hottest I have off the top of my head. Heat me up, baby. The 3D Legend of Zelda games aren't very good. Okay. Breath of the Wild being the single most overrated game in the last decade easily. Hang on, should we like respond? Yeah, yeah, you can grade those, sure. I'm not gonna disagree. Yeah, I thought you might not hate that this. Breath thing. of the Wild is overrated. It's still great. It's very great. I would argue The Witcher 3 is way more overrated than Breath of the Wild. I would one hundred percent agree with that. 
So I really like Breath of the Wild too, though. So this one you're gonna not like. Okay. Outside of its game world art direction, which I don't think is a term. I think game world and art direction are two separate things. Anyway, outside of its game world art direction and photo mode, maybe they meant it as three things, Ghost of Tsushima isn't a very good game. Despite hearing how good this combat was, that was largely the thing that ruined the experience for me. Plus some other related design decisions, there was also just some general persistent issues that constantly popped their heads out. Wait, what? There there was also just some general persistent issues that constantly popped their heads out. That was a lot of words. So There's just a lot of little things he didn't like. Yeah, I don't get. I don't get what that last part is. All right. No. no. Uh, yeah, so, I disagree. The combat's so cool and it's so really, unique. Uh, the Ghost of Tsushima is one of those games that I think is. I think if there's anything you can criticize about the game, it's the story. Yeah, it's definitely the story. The or characters the, I guess aren't. Jin as a protagonist the characters aren't is a little bland. Yeah. Um, but everything else is like extremely polished. It doesn't reinvent the wheel. Or I guess it does reinvent the wheel. Yeah, when, t- when it comes to combat and, like, UI specifically. I love yeah, the UI it, of that game. It doesn't, like, do anything super innovative and unique, but it does everything really, really, really well. Agreed. So. His, uh, or sorry, their last one. Uh-huh. The Uncharted series isn't very good. Why does this take suddenly becoming a I thing? don't know. The gameplay is so completely and utterly mind-numbing and boring that it sucks the excitement out of the set pieces. First of all... The set pieces are the best bit of gameplay in those games. If you're going to criticize anything, the shooting I get. But, spoiler alert, uh-huh. very rarely are there games with great combat and great story, and I would prefer a great story. For example, Red Dead 2, yeah. the combat is very boilerplate. GT- Honestly, give me Uncharted shooting over Rockstar shooting, Yes, yeah, I think so, too. Like, Last of Us, people, some people really hate the combat of Last of Us. Um, no. I... I, I don't understand this take personally. I don't, I don't like, yes, it's not. I mean, what do you want Uncharted to feel like? That's my question is like, do you want it to feel like Battlefield? Like that doesn't make sense for that game. I wonder, I mean, is there, a, is there a good example of really great shooter gameplay in a single player game? Do you think they want, would rather you just replace the third person cover shooting of Uncharted with like. QTE type sequences. Well, no, because they said the gameplay ruins the set pieces, which are more QTE. Sure, uh, because I do think that here's what I'll say. Yet, yeah, especially, I think this criticism should mainly be leveraged at Uncharted one through three. Yes, four massively improves the gameplay Agreed. in a lot of ways. Yeah, because it, beca- it basically becomes Last of Us. Similar thing with Last of Us one to two. Even sure. though I really love Last of Us one gameplay, yeah, Last of Us two takes a lot of steps forward. Uh, but even like the traversal and everything is improved in Uncharted Four. It's just your qualms about you know certain story choices that define whether you really love four or rank four lower than say two or three. Sure. Um, but Uncharted One, Two, and Three, the gunplay is not like exhilaratingly good. No, no, no. But That's like, not what you're there for. Yeah. Like I and you know we're white men. <laughs> I can maybe never relate more to a protagonist than Nathan Drake. Right. Like, yeah. He's so fun. Like, he, he is very fun, and I and Elena. Elena is so good. <laughs> Elena is the best character from like an objective perspective in the series, except maybe Sully, like, and, and maybe Chloe. I really, great I, I really too. like Chloe as like, a character. Just the cast of characters in Uncharted is nigh unparalleled. Yeah, like it's in really terms good. of just fun characters to hang out with. Yeah, I don't. I really, I'm struggling to think of a of an amazing single player shooter. Amazing single player. I know. Shooter. I know a lot of people celebrate Titanfall Two. Their single uh-huh. player. I remember that being a huge thing. I played it and thought it was fine, but I don't want Uncharted to like. I got I, two levels in. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I didn't get very far. I think the story gets better. That's on that's me. All, that's what I've heard. That's on me. But like, I don't know what people want Uncharted to feel like. They just don't want what it is. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. They, there's not a. But this is what it should do. Like Tomb Raider feels like Uncharted, and Tomb Raider yeah. feels fine. Honestly. Well, Tomb Raider a little stealthier, which I will sure. say that's that's my favorite Uncharted thing. Uncharted trends that way too. With it, four. That's my favorite thing that they introduced in four was adding stealth mechanics because mm-hmm. uh, I do much prefer being able to approach that sort of game that way. Agreed. Um, I will give a little bit of deference to say I even I don't hate the Uncharted shooting, but there are a little too many unnecessary like monster closets in Uncharted. Sure. Yeah, that's always that's always kind of where they just me throw too. like an obscene amount of enemies at right. you. Uh, yeah. Those have, games are great. Have your take. All right. Next one. There's, a, there's, suck a, on it there's too. a few of these. Go so ahead. strap in. 
arbitrary function said uh, I'm, I'm just taking out a snippet of this but this was their larger take just uh-huh. distilled next gen is just a bunch of nerds counting pixels and listing graphics tech and has nothing to do with game design or gameplay innovation you can maybe make that argument from like <laughs> my counter oh well that's is this uh-huh. that's part of it the dual sense if you're listening to the audio version uh, this this controller plays differently and makes games feel differently than I've ever experienced. So that's my one argument for next gen. I was just thinking, like, you can maybe argue that from specifically one generation to the very next generation sometimes. Sure. But, like, you can't make that argument that, like, three generations ago that games were fundamentally the same <laughs> right, as right, they right. are now. Like, yeah. change happens over time. And, like, especially, like, or even if you want to argue, like, the beginning of the PS4, Xbox One era yeah. is not the same as what the like end of this generation oh, will sure. be. Like Once they've completely like maxed out the potential of the PS5 and the sure. Xbox Series X, it, games will look a lot different than they did. I mean, I, playing on the Xbox One S, playing the show, the show looked fine, but I'm was I, I I'm not someone to like really go in depth of like, what FPS is this running at? Like uh-huh. all that kind of stuff. But... I could totally realize this does not look as good as anything I've played on PS5. Like, yeah. it is noticeable. I think some people may just be a little upset about not being able to get next gen, and this is their sort of coping with it. Well, that's fine. I understand. I totally get it. Next up. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're fine. You, you know, just go, go whine in your corner. <laughs> you can't find your PS5. Whatever. User Glio nice. says... Do you know why the media never gives five or less to most games? Because in most cases, it's not worth spending the time playing bad games to analyze them because nobody cares about them. They do not generate engagement. Unless the IP is going to generate clicks like Rambo or Sonic, funny examples, no one wants to waste their time reviewing bad games. Because it's not like watching a bad two-hour movie. It's wasting dozens of hours of your time on something bad. If you spend a little time playing really bad games... You realize that a six is actually a good game. That's why it seems that they start. That's why it seems that they start scoring at seven, because nobody cares about bad games and they never get reviews that give them a four or a three. Most of the games people talk about are good, very good, great, and excellent. Nobody here talks about bad games. If you want to know what a bad game really is, take a look at what's new on Steam. Pick a game at random and reevaluate your reevaluate your scale. Now, I agree with some of this. Yeah. That like what, some merit. What people call bad games probably aren't awful. Yeah. But the idea that media never gives a game less than five because they always review good games isn't Go true. Go look at the Ball and Wonder World review exactly. from like two that months was, ago. That was the game I was going to point to. And maybe people would argue it generates clicks, but the only reason it generates clicks is because it's bad. Yeah. So like it's, it's one of those weird cyclical things. I do get what they mean. A bad game becomes less interesting than a bad movie because a movie is such a short experience sometimes bad games can go on forever but I, I disagree I think there's this weird I was talking about this on the stream recently where someone was like oh IGN never gives a game less than a 7 whatever I don't think that's true and I just think most of the games people do get excited for and read reviews for are probably going to be decent because an argument I've been making for a while now is that the developers that are making games right now grew up with video games And that's still a relatively new thing to say that the people who made games grew up with them. And most people realize what it takes to make at least a decent game. Yeah. So the average, it's not that the average media outlet doesn't like scoring games lower. I think the average game is better than the average game 10 years ago. That's what I was saying. I got two points. Yeah. Point one, bad games more often than not just don't get made. Right. Right. Which is kind of what you were just saying. Unless they're like shovelware on Steam or whatever. That's a whole different thing. There's obviously exceptions, but like... You think Sony is going to watch like one of their first party studios you know, gestating a bad game and then eventually it gets to a point where they're going to have to start testing it and they'll be like, this is not even remotely what we're looking for. They just scrap it. They don't yeah, exactly. they push would start, it all the way through start the Start something line. new. Yeah. My second point, this person kind of makes it sound as though this one, through, one to ten scale is objective. Mm, uh, like games don't get X. Like an ESRB yeah, rating or sort something. Sort of. Like your scale is your scale. Right. Like, and maybe people ought to sort of redefine their scale, but it kind of just depends on how, if a person tells you how they define their scale, then a 
nine to them might be a seven to you. Exactly. One hundred percent. Yeah. Because like if I if my scale is like okay, a zero is unplayable. Right. A ten is perfect. Yeah. Then a five is like playable and okay Had i could something. go either way yeah then a six is like a game that i would play and at least mildly enjoy right but that's not how i choose to yeah exactly really how i choose to sort of thrust praise upon my games if i like a game at all i want to give it a score that is going to really tell you that i like it yeah uh and so that's sort of how like my personal threshold is more like seven is where you really start getting into games that are like worth playing yes eights and nines are great games and tens are perfect yes that's sort of and now you know that, and you can contextualize accordingly. Right. Seven, to me, is kind of where I start, I'm recommending this. Yeah. Like, this is a pure recommend. Uh, I run into this issue a lot with Letterboxd, which is a website where you can... It's like a social media for, for movies. Um, and you can give your rankings to movies you watched. And depending... I have to kind of learn the people I follow on there, because my view of movies, like, a three out of five star movie is your average movie. Yeah. Like, I enjoyed it. There wasn't much to say about it. It was fine. Like, fine is three stars to me. Some people would say that's two and a half stars. Some people say that's two stars, whatever. That very much ranges. So, it looks like on Letterboxd, I give a lot of things four stars. In reality, that's me going, I enjoyed it. Like, I would tell people to watch this. It's not an amazing movie. It's not, like, one of my favorites of all times, but I enjoyed it. So, and yeah, that's going to depend so much on person. That's why we always talk about... Not following sites, but following reviewers and, you know. And that's why I'm a fan of, you know, more specific granular scales. Sure. Where, like, you can get into the nitty gritty of, like, I, I, if someone gave a game, someone should just come out and give a game, like, a 9.672. <laughs> and I would really respect them for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've got two more. Uh-huh. User 4Cute says... I'm really starting to think that From Software is incapable of doing anything interesting with their Souls formula after watching that Elden Ring trailer. There's a oxymoron in this sentence, which is that the Souls formula is inherently interesting. <laughs> that's 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 a good point. So, can I have another beverage? Oh, you can have whatever you want. <laughs> Ti said that I think. So. I, I think it's whatever so. you like. Yeah, no, is what I know. he said. I know. Uh, to paraphrase a legend. Uh, yeah, I just like. You can beat a formula to death as long as people still like it. Like, yeah, look at Ubisoft. <laughs> and he, well, they're you know they're they beat on the, it to death, and they're on the tail end of that. Yeah. Uh, From is on arguably, they might be at the height of their powers. Yeah, they're like the top of the bell curve for sure. Because like people like were still like up through. I would say Demon Souls and Dark Souls One were still like ooh like this sort of like underground. It's like a taboo. It's kinda, really hard. Like yeah. oh, I'm playing Dark Souls. And then two was bad, and then three. Uh, <laughs> well, then Bloodborne. Yeah, and then like three and or Bloodborne and three is sort of where they're like, oh, From is here. Yeah, get used. This to is a it. thing. Exactly. People love it. Yeah, and they've released. Am I missing a game? Sekiro was next. Yeah, and then, and then I guess Demon Souls was just a remake. So they've yeah. only released one game since then. Yeah, they're still clearly at like the climax oh, of yeah. what they can do. Lastly, this one I pulled just for you. Of course. Superman is not the best track in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and not even the song that always reminds me about that game. Here and Now by The Ernies is the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater tune. <laughs> Felt good to get this off my chest. Great choice. <laughs> Excellent choice. Shout out to user... N- oh, God. Norsu Champ? Or Norsu Chomp? <laughs> now, that being said, I love that song. I love both of those songs. Uh, yeah. Neither would be the one that I would go to. What would you? Uh, what would be your pick? I mean, ninety six quite bitter beings is like that's mine for not, sure. Like pretty much, like, <laughs> it's pretty unbeatable in that regard. Uh, but then there's like, oh man, there are certain songs that I like, but it's because I've listened to that song a lot since that it's I'm like, not as nostalgic anymore in a way. Whereas like, uh, what's I know the song is Non Kempos Mentis. <laughs> okay, by uh, oh, hey, I'm gonna find it. This is just, it's a rap, or it's, when I talk rap, this is like early, maybe late 80s, like rap. Oh, okay. Like, uh, Went to the hat store today and I bought myself exactly. a hat. <laughs> By, a great name for a rap group, Haiku de Tot. Nice. Haiku de Tot. Yeah, very cool. Like, non Campos Mint is by Haiku de Tot. Like, awesome name, awesome song, awesome band. Check that out. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to make that my wreck. We'll get back to that. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. Good choice, though. The Ernie's Here and Now. Fantastic song. I would argue 
that Superman, not their best song. Oh, no. I would say their cover of 99 Red Balloons is their best song. Yeah, and, but then so there's good. also uh, Spokesman, which is another... Be a spokesman! It's a heck of a song. And, you know, even saying Spokesman, it's like... You gotta say Spokesman, I guess. Yeah, the, that's just the way he's, he enunciates so clearly. <laughs> Man, bring Ska back. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> Ska came before reggae. Now let's move on to our brief but fun, discussion-y, brainstormy, big topic. Okay, I have no idea what this is. Yeah. So... I don't know if we've ever really gone through this mental exercise. Okay. But I know that we, I, I'm sure we've brought it up before. Yeah. Because it's a funny observation of business and the world. Okay. okay. Which is that you can look at a company or you can come up with like ideas for a new company by saying, I want to make the Uber of K jewelers. Sure. Something like that. Yes. You know? Yeah. You, you want to make the X of Y. Right. Let's do that with games. Okay. You want to make this game of this other game. You want to like take the sort of shell of one game and infuse something <laughs> right. else into it. The example that immediately came to my head was, I would love to play the Grand Theft Auto of Tony Hawk. Okay. Wait. So does that mean it's Tony Hawk movement? In GTA, what it's is Tony Hawk gameplay in just a much bigger world, expansive world with more stuff to do? Gotcha. Okay. Like imagine like skateboarding around Los Santos. Yeah, that, like, would, be that dope. would be sick. That'd be really fun. Uh, so that was sort of my genesis idea. You okay, know, we could just go off to the races, and maybe a good place to start. Like an obvious template is the Grand Theft Auto of anything, right? Uh, sure. So maybe you can start there. You can start wherever. Just tell me what's where are your neurons firing? I want to play the Bloodborne of Bioshock. So Bloodborne combat in a Bioshock setting. Ah, uh, okay. And I don't know. Maybe Bioshock Infinite might work better for this. Because I don't know the other than fighting just like a big daddy. I would love to see what sort of boss creatures you could come up with in that world. Right? Like sure. all these weird... I mean, that... that You fight that giant eagle. <laughs> oh, right. The, so the songbird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, th there's just so much life in all of those worlds. That would be so cool. I think that's one of the things we both love about Bloodborne is the just yeah. the world itself. It would be really cool to see... All of that great combat that we love in a world as rich as the Bioshock world. It would be pretty sick if, like, can we? Spo I mean, how spoiler do we want to get about Bioshock Infinite? Uh, how? Wait. Here's what I'll say: It would be sick to fight Father Comstock. Oh yeah, that would be really cool. Like, or hell, it'd be sick to fight the Lutest twins if they somehow. Oh like, my god! Yeah, they split you know, and fight you yeah, on other sides. Weird, like portal type stuff. Ooh, portal. Oh, what, ooh. What do with portal. I want to play the Portal of Peggle. <laughs> now wait a minute we keep saying the x of y we don't have a set rule for which is which so sure is are we talking peggle gameplay in the portal universe or portal so game the first thing i said is i want to play the grand theft auto of tony hawk so tony hawk is the gameplay to me so, so i should have said the bioshock of bloodborne so the, we'll make the ladder to be like the gameplay core okay gotcha in the, and you can take whatever so yeah the, bi the bioshock of, of bloodborne yeah. that makes sense all right so I just threw that out there, but I mean, what would that even be? The portal of Peggle? So it would be... So it would be Peggle gameplay, but you introduce like portals to it to yes. be like other ways that you can like... There are three maps you're playing all at once, and you have to like shoot one into <laughs> them over there. I think the cool thing about that would be you could frame it as like you're the test subject testing something. Oh, uh, yeah. And you could have just GLaDOS shit talking you while you play Peggle. Yeah, sorry, there's a fly There's here. a fly. You can't catch it. Oh, I missed. I catch a gnat every now and then, but a full-size mm. fly, they're elusive. <laughs> Shifty bastards. Uh, yeah, that could be... I would love to see Peggle in a tone that was more cynical and more mm. like like a narrator-based kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Uh, what the... Getting over it? Oh, the Bennett Foddy game? Yeah. yeah, that I guess that is kind of a good approximation. I had one, and then I lost it. I want to play... Oh, what gameplay do I want? I know the style I want. Okay. So wait, which one comes first? The gameplay? The style comes first, Style right? or some other aspect, but we right. want the gameplay to be other game. 
I want to play <laughs> the Stanley parable of something. And I can't figure out what gameplay I want. Because I think that tone is so cool. I think, I mean, what comes to mind, just because it's first person, is like, I want to play the Stanley parable of Call of Duty. Oh, that's interesting. Like a, like a cynical narrator-based first-person shooter. Yeah, that would be dope. Like, where, like, like they're talking... Oh, you shot the baby again. <laughs> yeah, like, like, something stupid like that. That would actually be... Just really just introducing any kind of more tangible gameplay elements to something like Stanley Parable. Yeah, where it has so much character yeah, already. Yeah, that is just, you know, rife with possibility. I was kind of thinking super hot. Like, you could do super hot style combat with Stanley Parable, but that's already kind of what it is anyway. Um, yeah, you could just introduce, like, oh, you missed that guy with the bottle you threw. Like, <laughs> Time to go again. <laughs> hmm. There's so many possibilities. There are. Let's, ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's another one it's like our draft pod where it's just a yeah. lot of thinking noises you talked about ML I'm trying to think of a sports game now oh and like what kind of dumb stuff could you do in a sports game I want the NBA street of NBA street yeah I want the NBA street of NBA live which is just NBA street <laughs> um hmm I'm gonna think I'm gonna think about Uncharted because okay. like that person brought it up I want, this is stupid. All right. I want the NBA street of ping pong. Ooh. <laughs> Give me a ping pong game, but it's got like power ups and, or tennis, it doesn't matter. But just, I want a really arcadey ping Mario pong Mario Aces tennis. Yeah, but. Eh. Yeah, I know. But you want a uh, freaking uh, live on stage playing in the background. <laughs> live on stage. <laughs> Uncharted. What can you do with Uncharted? Huh. I want the Tomb Raider of Uncharted. Uh. Oh. Hear me out. I want the Uncharted of the Order 1886. I think that world could be cool if it was better gameplay or better, well, better writing, I guess. So maybe I want the Order 1886 of Uncharted. I don't know which one. I want I want the Order 1886 to be no, I better. See you, I see <laughs> That's all I really want. Because I thought that had potential and then it wasn't great. I want... This is a game that's not even out yet. Okay. I want the... Well, I guess... I want the Uncharted uh -huh. of Sifu. Oh, the com the hand to hand combat game. Because there are the sequences in Uncharted that are actually just fist fights. Yeah, I think are maybe some of the most fun actual gameplay in those games. Yeah. So uh, there's like the, the if you know if you've played Uncharted four the jail like fist fight in like the laundry room. Yeah. Is like a really fun like visceral combat sequence that doesn't involve guns and erases a lot of people's like critique of like. Nathan Drake is a mass murderer who's killed sure, like 800 yeah. people over the course of this franchise. Uh, but I love those sequences of those of those games more than the shooting, and they're more character based. You can like interact, like you can throw a guy to Sully, and Sully will punch him back to you, like right. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't the opening of Uncharted Three have like a bar fight in it or something that's a, like that's that? That's the other really good example. Okay, yeah, I was I was trying to remember which one it was. Uh. There's so many good games. Yeah. It's basically think of a good game, then think of another game. <laughs> well, that's, I wonder if we could do a random generator style. Oh, that'd be interesting. Just load in a bunch of games and then decide what it is. You think of a game. Okay. And I'll think of a game. All right. And then we'll just see what happens. Okay. You get 10 seconds. Right. I have mine. Me too. So who's this? I'll, for, for the first one, mine will be the first game. Yours will be the second game. All right. I want... The Breath of the Wild of Celeste. <laughs> How does that work? So, big world. Yes. So, Celeste gameplay. So, maybe... Is Celeste... Celeste is not a Metroidvania. No, it's level It would probably have to become... You, you, what you would get would probably be something like Hollow Knight. Sure, yeah. Uh, but that more makes with sense. Celeste-style gameplay. And maybe and a little bit more colorful maybe like yeah. a little bit more whimsical and picture like 200 shrines scattered around oh that's a actually Metroidvania cool style world yeah you go in and it's just a platforming puzzle yeah that could be pretty pretty dope 
You're welcome, game developers. And see, the point of the like the point of the exercise of like the Uber of blank is like you say that I want the Uber of who Uber <laughs> Twitch, the Uber of Twitch. You want the Uber of Twitch, and you're like print money. Yeah, you know the the Breath of the Wild of Celeste print, print money. money. Yeah, the, yeah. We used to do this in college for logos, uh, where it's like come up with two different companies, and then what would their logo yeah. be? Um, it's a really good exercise for any sort of branding stuff. Uh. I want. Oh, we're, do, oh, we're doing it again. Hang on, let me get. It. Um, this has got to be exhilarating to listen to. Okay, I got one. I do too. So this time, yours is first. Okay. The Spider-Man of God of War. Oh, <laughs> whoa! So wait a minute. It would be which which world again? So this is this is God of War gameplay in the Spider-Man world. <laughs> So How would on. that work? Is there? A we game? need a superhero with a weapon. Thor? <laughs> are we basically making a Thor game? <laughs> I think we are. That's exactly what we're doing. You throw actually. the hammer. You throw the near. Yeah, and then you just fly around. We're basically making a Superman game with a hammer. Yes, uh, I'm cool with it. That is actually kind of cool. Uh, who would the villain be? I guess. I mean, who is the Loki of Spider-Man? Mysterio. Mmm. Maybe that's why he thinks he's Thor. Thor versus Mr. Well, hang on, I just did something stupid. I would. It would still be. It Loki. would just be Loki. <laughs> yeah, I wondered why you said that. And I was like, oh, I'll go with it. Maybe it's Loki and Mysterio. So wait, who's the Balder? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so someone who's kind of vain but impervious to damage. <laughs> that's a very specific. It is uh, shocker. <laughs> no, <laughs> who a vain. Uh, or at least that's the Baldur's not really vain in the game, but the, sure. the mythological Baldur is like his whole stick is he's very, he's the pretty boy. Yeah, sort of. yeah. Maybe uh, no, Ozymandias. Oh, not a Marvel villain crossover. <laughs> DC Marvel crossover. Here we go. Shout out, God! Watchmen's so good. It is. I actually never seen it. I've seen bits and pieces of the movie, yeah. not the show. Well, I was talking about the graphic novel. Oh. Which is completely disregard. Right there. Oh, yeah, I see it. I think so. What, Vision? Yeah, the Visions. It's ah. awesome. That's one of the reasons I didn't like WandaVision as much. Oh. Because there's a great story that's set in the suburbia with Vision. It's dope. Gotcha. Hmm. We're doing another one? Yeah. Hang on. So you're first this time? Yes. Okay. Well, but I, I had an example, but being first, that game would not have worked. <laughs> um, okay. Uh... Hmm. Okay. I want the Red Dead of Guitar Hero. <laughs> so it's just Outlaws in the or uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky. That's the only song. <laughs> it's just it's Mandolin Hero, and people are just. I don't know if that works very well. Oh man. Maybe I can change my second one. Let's go the Red Dead of. I actually don't know. It's just country music. Guitar yeah, yeah, Hero, like you know, Hero. Yeah. We're in the land of the bluegrass. All right, I got mine. Okay, so yours is first this time. Hey, give me a second. Uh, got it. I want the fallout of Infamous. So a superhero RPG? Yeah. We're making Avengers. And in more of like a... I mean, Infamous is kind of post-apocalyptic, but yeah. not, not quite, not the same level as Fallout. It's like we're making, like, Tank Girl or something. Shout out to Tank Girl. I just like electric powers. <laughs> Ooh, nuclear powers. Oh, that's cool. Like, you you have to blow up a nuke, but you have to be in it to get the power. Oh, that's your origin. <laughs> yeah. Nice, I like it. You do the, oh, sh- the race sphere. And the race sphere is actually nuclear. <laughs> and then now you are Nuke Boy. Uh, <laughs> that famous Fallout character, Nuke Boy. Yeah, it's not like like Cole is not infamous. Like, that's not his name. <laughs> but, <laughs> you are now Fallout. <laughs> All right, we want to do one more? One more. So this would be, which who's first? Mm, you. I just did Fallout. Okay. Uh, think, I got to think of something off the wall. Okay. Uh, so second is world. I keep second's asking. gameplay. Okay, gotcha. I keep uh, doing this. Right. Shoot. Man. What okay. Is something weird. I have I mine. 
Hmm. I could do this all day. This is fun. Yeah. That's a, it's a very fun exercise to do the, really any kind of way. You could do food. You like the O'Charlies of Papa John's. <laughs> <laughs> you just made... You just do little pizzas pizza. on dinner rolls. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Loaded pizza soup. Man. Okay. So, wait, who was first? <laughs> I've forgotten mine now. I'm first, right? Yes. This time? What was mine? I don't oh, know. I know, I know, I know. The guacamole. Of Mario. Ooh. That's basically just guacamole, but... But no, or which Mario? Oh, I was... Th- oh, maybe it's 3D. Like, maybe you're like Odyssey. Odyssey, yeah. You do 3D. Dude. That would be awesome. <laughs> 3D Lucha Libre style game would actually be really cool. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. like... Uh, Lucha Metroidvania, but in Odyssey style yeah. gameplay. That'd be sick. Print money. Yeah, that might be the best pitch we've had. All that right. was fun. It was fun. My wreck is non campos mentis, I guess. <laughs> uh, we, we acknowledge that neither of us had mustered up a recommendation, but has one suddenly appeared to you in the course of our conversation today? Yes, and it has nothing to do with video games. The best kind of recommendation. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, rec- if we can open up to that, and I'll come up with something. Oh, does it have to have to do something with video games? It always has. But I'm saying, if you can't, you know, when you no, gotta, no, 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 no. If you gotta go to the well, you go to the well. I got it. I'm recommending Game Pass. Game Pass is legitimately sick. Genius. Uh, I was. I I got it for a dollar. You, if you have it on PC, you can download the Xbox app. How did it even dollar. happen? What that it was for a dollar? I just downloaded the Xbox app and it was like, oh, start your first month for a dollar. Right. It was like sweet. And then because that was Game Pass Ultimate, and then uh, Newegg was having a sale on three months of Game Pass for like twenty five bucks. So I picked that up. So it's, now I have Game Pass for four months. So four months for twenty six dollars. Yes. Wow. It, this library is legitimately incredible. Every Xbox exclusive, uh, all the Bethesda games, pretty much. Some of them are only on console, uh, but a lot of like there's over a hundred on PC. A ton of indies that I've had my eye on. Games like Carto. I'll probably talk about these games next week. Uh, Carto. There's a game called Backbone where you're a raccoon that's a detective. Looks pretty cool. Uh, There are several indies that I really want to try. Last Stop, which is by the Virginia developers. That game's been kind of making the rounds for people who like narrative telltale type stuff. And not to mention like Halo Master Chief Collection and all this Xbox stuff. This isn't an ad. I just am amazed at the freaking library of Game Pass. Yeah. Uh, And even if you have a PC that can half run some of this stuff a dollar is such a good deal that yeah. you should try it out yeah that's a that's a good i'm just curious now what was your other recommendation gonna be uh <laughs> it's gonna be the movie sherlock jr by buster keaton from 1924 my my overall recommendation was gonna be look back into older stuff and you might be surprised what you find because so letterboxd put out a list of the top 250 narrative films uh as decided by average user score and Buster Keaton's uh, Sherlock Jr. was the earliest one, I think, or one of the earliest ones from, like, 1924. It's 45 minutes, which is already great. I love that you can sell me on a movie in less than an hour. Uh, And I was just genuinely impressed by, like, the movie magic that happened in a movie 90 years old. Yeah. Like, I was so incredible. It was so impressive. Uh, He also did all the stunts for the movie, some of which are really cool. And he broke his neck filming this movie and didn't realize it till years later and just kept filming and was fine. Dude was awesome. Shout out to Buster Keaton. Aragorn broke his foot. <laughs> Everyone loves mentioning that one. Do you know when he kicked the helmet, he actually broke his toe? Great movie. It is. I'll try to come up with a game that's not Slay the Spire to talk about next week. <laughs> but uh, That's fine. In the meantime, yeah, Non Campos meant this great song. Even Shout though out. I already recommended the Tony Hawk soundtrack on another podcast. <laughs> that's okay. But it was brought up. That's your fault, random reset era user. Yeah, whatever your name was. So, next week, presumably... Be back. Hopefully, I sound better. (laughs) That's it. That's it. Until then, (laughs) we're tapping out.